Alrighty, as the uh, dinner festivities and so on continues, as we're kind of cooking up a little bit of a dinner for a uh, small private gathering with some of the friends, I figured I will answer a question that just popped up on my email from one of you guys, uh, Cayman. And it's a good question. It's basically a very quick one in terms of what are some of the hemostatic agents that are used in surgery and what are recommended ones. And what I can tell you that the most important thing about hemostasis during surgery is number one is listening to your medical history of your patient, making sure what kind of medications they're on that are potentially having a problem with coagulation. The second thing would be the anesthesia and the fact that you would have to use one in 50,000 epinephrine uh, concentration. So Xylacam 1 in 50 is what I use for the infiltration. Of course, the blocks can be in 1 in 100,000 epinephrine to reduce the amount of total amount of epinephrine that you use. But you also have to give enough time for the anesthetic and the hemostasis to work. So I do not start. I have a timer on after I give my last, last shot. I wait at least about 15 minutes so you can get those you know, alpha agonist uh, components of the epinephrine to cause enough vasoconstriction. And then you have really only about 30 minutes time period for pre, you know, prior to getting the rebound effect and getting more bleeding. So as a result, efficiency is really a big and important component of your surgery. So to that extent, having retrofilling techniques that are more efficient, and that's actually one of the reasons why I developed the lid technique, because it is really the fastest way you can do your retrofilling by the combination of using a syringable material and adding a little putty on top of it. Each retrofilling should literally take about 10 seconds to place, which will give you just enough of a window of time for hemostasis where you can place your retrofilling without contamination. And then right as soon as you place the putty, if, if blood comes into the area, it's not a problem because the seal has already been uh, achieved. Also, one of the important things about hemostatic agents are also highly inflammatory post-op. So I try to minimize the amount of materials and chemicals that I would have to use. Traditionally, people have used a lot of ferric sulfate as well as uh, uh, aluminum chloride. Now, I do not use ferric sulfate at all. It's highly inflammatory and people end up having more discomfort post-op. And one of the reasons why I feel like my surgeries post-op are not as uh, patients do not complain about discomfort as much is primarily because of the fact that I limit the amount of chemicals used because of a quick retrofilling technique. And if I do need additional hemostasis, I may use just epi pellets that contain uh, epinephrine or racemic epinephrine into a pellet and place some pressure. And that's pretty much it. Occasionally, if somebody's bleeding too much, I may use uh, aluminum chloride a little bit, but I make sure that I remove all of it as much as possible afterwards. But the key here is when you're trying to achieve uh, hemostasis, you have to keep in mind that the bleeding Bleeding time generally for most people is around two, two minutes. So pressure uh, and time is really the best uh, hemostasis at that point inside the crypt by waiting and then getting enough of a coagulation naturally by the patient so you don't have to use abrasive and harsh chemicals. All right, guys, that's it. It was a quick one, but it was a good question about hemostasis because it's very important during surgery. And as you know, surgery is very close to my heart. So I hope you found this helpful. See you guys in the next video.